Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever you decide to watch this video, or it pops up in your feed. <laughs> Today, I'm going to show you how to lace up 3D printed scale armor that I've been making for a special pet project of custom printed Rolling Thunder scale armor. And that's what's in store for you in this episode of 3D Printing the Miniature Universe with me, Papa Jester. Stay tuned, because I show you how I made it, what I made it, why I made it for, and how it goes together. But if this ain't your cup of tea, tune back in next time, because... In the future of 3D printing the miniature universe with Papa Jester, I'm going to show you how I put together this sweet 40k full sized for cosplay plasma pistol. All right, let's tuck into another episode. Ooh, next! All right, welcome back to another episode of 3D Printing the Miniature Universe with myself, Papa Jester. And today, I am going to be starting to assemble my Rolling Thunder scale armor. Now, I'm not familiar with how exactly to lace this up, but I've got a good idea, and that's what I'm going to try today. So first, I went and got some 550 parachute cord and tied a knot in one end. Now, the way I th think this is going to go is that I'm going to go in through this one. And pull the whole thing together. Go through here. Second hole at the bottom. And then I'm going to grab one of these pretty translucent blue scales. I printed three of these up as just a flute, just to see what it would look like, and I really like it. And as a friend of mine, Amber, reminded me, really good friend, really close friend, she's, uh, she comes up with these jewels of inspiration and knowledge that I just don't think about sometimes. She reminded me that blue and black are gypsy thunder colors. So I decided, well, since they're pretty, they're shiny, they look nice, I'm going to print more of them up. Alright. So we got this started, and we push through the second hole, and I'm going to not try to drop the daggum cord all the time. Alright, to give you a little bit of explanation of what exactly I'm trying to accomplish here, I have taken multiple considerations into my choice of materials. I selected to use for this project PETG, or as I've come to lately find out, it's also called PETG, for two major reasons. One, unlike PLA, it does not break down in the sunlight. For two, being that it's a food grade or food safe material and can be washed in 
uh, I wouldn't really put in a dishwasher, but I don't think it'd be hot enough to actually warp the plastic. But Pet G, you can wash. And since us fighters in the SCA tend to wear our armor in the heat of the sun, we get all sweaty, plus we'll wear it in the rain because, well, we're crazy. So I wanted something that's going to hold up to the environment as well as the fighter himself. The second reason I picked Pet G was of all the stress tests I saw online between PLA, ABS, and Pet G, Pet G turned out to be one of the more structurally sound and durable materials to use, as opposed to Kevlar, not Kevlar, oh, I wish, wish I could print straight Kevlar, found ABS Kevlar, but I don't really think that's exactly the same thing, although I still want to try it. Um, what was I, what was already messed up. Um, carbon fiber. That's it. Since I don't have the enclosure set up, and I don't really know too much about carbon fiber printing, it is one of the ones I want to get into. I didn't print it out of that. Also, printing armor would basically double my cost if I were to print out of carbon fiber. But it's still on my list of things to do. I have a lot of ideas for printing with uh, carbon fiber. Everything from carbon fiber uh, holst uh, gun holsters. I want to see if I can actually put together a usable carbon filter or a carbon fiber buck knife. Um, again, I want to see if carbon fiber is going to hold up to be a good style of material to use for armor because I am big on trying to bring my ideas of 3D printing into the SCA world. Now, you may say none of these materials, Papa Jester, are used in the Middle Ages, and you would be correct. But if you have played with the SCA at all, you often hear the term as long as it looks, period. We have a word for people that are so anal that everything has to be period Pacific. We call them period Nazis. First, I'm probably sure that term is not too uh, friendly a term nowadays. Because social correctness, which I give two tosses about, but still, everything from garb to armor to even the setup of these tents, these people have to be 100% period correct. Well, in the Society for Creative Anachronisms that I was raised in, well, practically raised in, I have been fighting as a full armor fighter in the SCA since I was 24. I've had a lot of fun. But over the years, I have become less and less physically capable of fighting on the field. 
So I decided to follow the example provided to us by one of our most noteworthy kingdom individuals, Baldar, who is famous for making the Baldar Blunt, or Baldar Tip, for arrowheads. And now his design for a Baldar uh, arrowhead is used throughout multiple kingdoms and has become the SEA standard for arrow tips. I even got to try one of his Baldar basket hilts. Light, uh, I believe it was ABS plastic basket hilt. I currently have, when I last used it, a metal basket hilt. Nice, thick, heavy steel. And... I messed up. It weighs a lot. Even though our swords are made of rattan, a standard stick of rattan, about 36 inches, is roughly about... Oh, I'd say about 3 pounds. And an all-steel basket hilt adds about another five or six pounds to it. So you don't really think that would weigh all that much or be that much of a problem until you've had to swing that sword over your head all around your body for a good three or four hours while you're just trying to play this game. And you realize just how heavy it actually is. So, when the Beldar Basket Hill came along, it was revolutionary. It was lightweight. It literally dropped the weight of our fighting swords in half. So, following his example, I am trying to make usable, combat capable, scale armor. 3D printing scale armor. And this is so far the... This is the Type 3 scale. Uh, there was a Type 1 that looks like Dragon Teeth. Uh, type 2 that was... This size, or uh, this design, but like half the size. And uh, I didn't really think that worked all that well. So I decided to go with this size and this design. This is now version 9... 9.1? The first nine variations would not print right. Like the, uh, the thunder wheel here would be halfway over, or too far up, wouldn't be seen, and since one of my selling points is being able to personalize, I get to talking, I put everything in the wrong place, uh, personalize your scales so that your personal coat of arms, or your house's coat of arms, or even your kingdom's device can be put onto the scale. And like this, you can have personalized rolling thunder in Gypsy Haven Colors scale armor. The thing or two I did not know until I started this project and started looking into scale armor because in my entire career I used plate armor and a coat of plates. Those are two types of armor that I used my entire time fighting. I have never once fought in chainmail. I have never once done scale armor. And I have never fought in leather armor. 
because I'm still kind of a wimp, and I do not like it when people hit me with sticks, and I feel it. That is not my idea of a good time. Of course, there are some fighters in the society that would disagree, like, uh, uh, the Warlord. Warlord of Gypsy. It reminds me of one of these Vikings that before a battle would take his own hammer and beat his helmet until he got a concussion and then fully enraged go out and just beat the crap out of things. I guess that's why they call him the Wolverine? You might know him. Triska Deva. Triska Deva. Oh god, I can't remember his last name. It's Triska something. But he also does TikTok. And I think he has a gaming channel on YouTube. Uh, 13 Star Gaming. I think he still does that. Plus, if you ever get a chance, look up Amber the Pink on TikTok. She's got a lot, a lot of videos, and surprisingly, quite a bit of a following. Of course, well, you know, she's a pretty girl, so, of course, everybody wants to look at the pretty girl doing goofy stuff. But, getting back to my point, I did not know when I first started this project that... Uh, scale armor was not called scale mail. That mail refers to chain. And that scale armor historically speaking is called scale. Not scale mail. play a lot of role-playing games, and in D&D, Pathfinder, D&D 3.5, D&D 5.0, even 4th edition, <coughs> sorry, I get, a, I get a little sick every time I mention D&D 4th edition, <coughs> it's always referred to as scale mail, and that's incorrect. Alright, so far, I've got my test. This is the first row. Now, I'm going to put a loose knot in here for right now, because if this is successful, then eventually I'm going to go on to lace up... Well, I don't know. I was planning on making this in a size for my test <sighs> I'm still getting used to everything my 10 long printer does it still unnerves me every time it makes an unusual noise So, I got my first row done. Now, let's figure out the second row. Now, I'm pretty sure the second row just goes on as such. And I just lace that way. But after watching several... Alright, well, one tutorial that I found on lacing up scale armor... it was actually about lacing up lamellar armor, is that you have to go in different ways. I'm not really sure how that applies to this. But they say it has something to do with movement. Oh well. Anyways doesn't matter, I need to cut another piece of cord, so 
to lace the next row. So I'm going to take some more of my 550 parachute cord. And I got my 550 from Goldberg? Goldberg? This company. Bought that on Amazon about five, I think it said it was 300 yards. Doesn't really look like 300 yards, but they say it was 300 yards, or maybe it was 100 yards. No, nope, no, nope, no, nope. it was 150 yards of 550 parachute cord for 11.95. Now, I'm sure if I ordered in bulk, I could get it at a lower price, but since I really wasn't sure of what I was doing, I just went ahead and ordered enough for a good test. So to start off, I go ahead and melt the end so I can make it to a nice fine point so it'll be easier. Push through. Ah, nice hot plastic. I don't know what these bugs are, but they annoy the frack out of me. Alright, so I'm going to start at this end. putting a knot at the end of my line so my scales don't come loose and start from the reverse side start this end of the row grab me another black scale and this time I'm going to go through the bottom two holes. Now my design of scale is different than lamellar. Lamellar lacing has usually two holes in the top of the plate, a hole in the bottom of the plate, and two holes to each side of the plate. And is a pain in the butt. <laughs> this is a lot simpler. Just four holes. Two at the top. Two halfway down. And I believe... I hope... This actually turns out right. Alright, I'm going to pause it for a little bit, so through the magic of uh, video, I can show you two, three rows, and then we'll see how it looks like. So, magic! Right, and through the magic of video editing, here it is. Now, I said I was only going to do three rows, but... I wound up doing, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight rows. Doesn't this look nice? This looks so nice. Check this out. So, this is the result of about eight to 10 days of printing these tiles, these scales. I've got three left in my bag, and I'm gonna have to print up a lot more. So, this just barely covers the stomach. <laughs> but it does tell me that the rest of the tiles that I'll need to finish this should take 
another month worth of printing these tiles to finish. And the black tiles, the black scales, represent uh, one kilogram at one kilogram of material. The blue is about 500 kilograms. And why I've only got so many scales, so few scales from one kilogram of material is because each one of these scales, well, I think I have a couple of version two scales mixed in here, but all the version three scales are 99% infill. And I wanted these things as solid as I could possibly get them because I expect these things to stand up to heavy hammer hits. Now, we in the SCA have made plastic scale before and we use uh, pickle barrel. Or uh, if you can find one, for sale, you can usually pick them up cheap. Uh, one of the blue garbage garbage drums, plastic gar garbage drums. So I know plastic works, but I don't know if 3D printed plastic works. So that's what this project is about: testing this design, seeing if it works on the fighting field and if I don't wind up busting off hundreds of little thunder wheels so that every time somebody goes out onto the field with one of this you can tell when, th when a thunder armor has been around because there's hundreds of little wheels all over the ground hopefully that won't happen and that uh, my layer adhesion is spot on see that I'm going to have to tighten up the lacings in a few spots. But I guess that's about normal. Well, that's it for uh, I guess my first test assembly of lacing up scale pet G armor. In the future, I'll put this all together, and I'll keep adding videos so that eventually you at home will see a full entire piece of body armor made of 3D printed Pet G scale armor. All right, I'm Papa Jester, and this is. 3D Printing the Miniature Universe. If you have any comments or questions, please add them in the comment section down below. Remember to always like and subscribe, share with your friends, and as always, print whatever you want, whenever you want, but remember to always have fun printing. All right, good night, everybody. All right, thanks for watching, and remember to like, share, and subscribe. Comment on things you like to talk about. Tell me what you thought about the episode. Give me your input. I'd love to hear it. Also, don't forget to check me out on Facebook at 3D Printing in the Miniature Universe with Papa Jester. Stay tuned for more exciting episodes of 3D Printing the Miniature Universe with Papa Jester. Hey y'all, you have a good night.